We have here a heap of used power supplies that someone brought around and they also brought around this with a heap of hard drives and they said that the stuff was testing and it worked. And immediately I thought to myself, well, this stuff clearly isn't tested and working when you've got hard drives that come in and they've got no PCBs on them. So you can't even plug them in to test them. So just like this X written on this hard drive, this one is completely gone. But some of this other stuff, what we're gonna to do today is take you guys through how I test out some of the used stuff. And it's more than just grabbing a power supply tester that you get off eBay. I've actually used them in the past and they can give out readings, but when it comes to actually putting a load and a stress test on that power supply, it can be faulty. And of course, you wouldn't wanna use anything faulty in a gaming PC. So what we have here is a heap of power supplies that do look like they're banged up. So I am a little bit pessimistic coming into this video. But that being said, we're gonna get straight into it, run these through the paces, and just quickly, stuff that doesn't work, we're gonna chuck it out. Stuff that does work, we'll keep it in the fold, and then perhaps run some more stress tests after we do the initial phase of Tech Yes Lovin'. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And what we've got here is a rating on the side. This one says 500 watt. It's from Antec and generally there is a heap of power supply brands that you can turn to and sort of trust in terms of the power that they're going to output. For instance, if this was a small W, then you'd be rest assured that it's probably not going to power anything besides an office PC. But we can see here, this one here has 450 watts available on the 12 volt line. And that's the line that essentially powers things like your CPU, your GPU, and most your important components in a gaming PC that are power hungry. However, as I said before, I am a little bit concerned about how dinged up these power supplies are. Now, another thing about these power supplies is too, you can see I've separated these three from the rest of the bunch. And that is because these have been slightly sticky and they smell like candy. And I'm just gonna give you guys a word of warning with that, it's really not a good thing. If you have power supplies like these, make sure you clean them down thoroughly with alcohol wipes because that means that person or where that environment has been with these power supplies, someone has been, let's just say, smoking something that is not good for your health. So the first power supply we put on this bench was not working at all. This one, the VS450 is, however, we're getting a signal out of it. And that is some good news because again, generally when you start it up, you wanna make sure it can actually give out power on those uh, volt lines and that's what it does. Generally the motherboard will also be testing out the five volt and the 3.3 in between. So something like this is really good news for a power supply like this. So you wanna monitor it, make sure it's not going to spark up or turn off after about five seconds of turning on, which that again, as we said before, can pass that test of those power supply tests which just essentially check the actual voltage lines themselves. Those keep going through these power supplies, then we'll get onto the hard drives. So we just got finished testing out the power supplies and using them in conjunction, the power supply tester in conjunction with testing out a real load uh, really is the best way to get through this quickly. These are actually pretty good if you are on the road as well. If you're out on a deals hunt and you quickly want to test a power supply, this is a really easy way. It will give you pretty much everything except the actual load testing itself. Uh, if you see, if we turn this power supply off, then this still has power going to it for a few seconds, which means the LEDs are draining the power supply. But this one here, I've pulled this out of the bunch because it is an interesting power supply where when we used it on this power supply tester, it did not show up with a 3.3 volt. And that's nothing to worry about if you're gonna use this in a gaming PC because all that means is that your hard drives are not hot swappable. Uh, that's what the 3.3 volt is for on your SATA connections. So without that, just means that you're not gonna be able to hot uh, plug them in once your PC is on. Not a problem at all if you're just putting in a gaming PC, plugging up all your hard drives and then turning the PC on. So, but with that said, we ended up getting six power supplies in total working out of the nine. Uh, two of them, one just didn't straight turn on at all. The other, the Corsair, had some kind of issue where it was clearly shorting out. 
And then this one here, the Dell on the power supply tester started showing up with a PG and that means power good and that was failing that test. So basically means that it's been used way too much and so it's not recommended for regular use. So now we've got here is phase two. We're testing out the hard drives two at a time. And uh, one thing I didn't mention before is that you'll see that I'm using an old HP board that doesn't support uh, gaming graphics cards. It's got no option in the BIOS to erase secure boot or um, enable CSM. So it's basically useless for a gaming PC. And I've got an i3 inside, so two gigabytes of RAM. So basically if the power supply has had anything faulty going on, it wouldn't damage any of the equipment. And also we're in the BIOS now and we can see that one of the two hard drives is working, one just doesn't show up at all. And this one here was making a noise. So this one here, SATA 2, the port says SATA 2, and that's the one that is working at the moment. So one for two, I don't know how my chances are looking on this 500 gigabyte hard drive, but let's give it a shot. So we ended up going through all these hard drives and they're all bad, uh, at least from what I'm testing here. The initial 2.1 terabyte, that was actually a mistake. The drive was faulty because I've got my 80 gigabyte hard drive here that works absolutely fine. I use this as a test drive, uh, mainly for testing out if I've made my own modular power supply connectors. I make sure they're getting the five and 3.3 volts out okay. And uh, of course, if this one goes, then there's a heap of other 80 gigabyte hard drives that I have. So they're basically the test dummies and all these here just didn't work at all. And it wasn't surprising. The condition they were in was absolutely terrible. And then three of the drives also had SAS connection types, which is different altogether. You're not gonna get that in a gaming PC. And seeing from what I've got with all the other drives, I'm gonna pretty much guess that these are duds as well. So that ended up kind of being a waste of time. But one thing that can come out of it is if you're on the road and you're picking up hard drives, one thing that I didn't, don't mention in my parts hunts is actually check out the drive itself and uh, see if it's been opened before and closed. And what you'll see in some of the drives is if they've been tampered with is that the screws, when the person's uh, screwing them back down, they'll bend in just ever so slightly on where it's been screwed back down. And so that means you're most likely looking at a drive that's either been refurbed, it doesn't work, or of course it doesn't have a whole lot of life left in it. In other words, just avoid it. So there we have it with testing out power supplies and also hard drives. Hopefully you guys learned a few tricks when it comes to the used stuff. Honestly, I've developed methods that just save me a lot of time and hassle instead of going through things and especially putting those things in a gaming PC where if you then have problems, you've got to pull everything out and that just takes so much time and also adds to the frustrations that you can already have with other things. Say for instance, motherboard and graphics card, compatibility problems, RAM and CPUs, the list goes on. But one thing we saw here today was that we got six of the nine power supplies working okay, they were fine, three of them weren't. And then all those hard drives, I went through and tested them out and they were just all completely dotted. I'm guessing the person who brought this stuff over to me here uh, sort of just wanted to make a quick buck and they didn't know how or didn't want to test any of this stuff. And of course, I just like, it was a friend, so I'm not really gonna say no, but I'm gonna question the sort of, I'm gonna ask them next time I see him where this stuff came from because it's kind of like, yeah, it was a little bit shady, especially in some of the smells coming off those parts. I have smelt that smell before, so I do know it's a very distinct smell. So if you come into parts that smell funny and they have a sticky sort of candy-like smell to them, then do be very careful with it. I wouldn't leave it in your residence. I'd clean it down thoroughly and make sure that stickiness is gone and it doesn't have that smell anymore. Uh, obviously don't take any of that stuff personally. It does pretty much melt your brain over time. It's a serious thing, uh, especially here on the Gold Coast. I don't know what it is, but the rates of people uh, using that kind of stuff is quite worrisome. But anyway guys, you're probably wondering where I have been and I just got back from PAX and honestly, I was so burnt out. Uh, just all the traveling I've been doing recently, Japan, Korea, then I had to go to Sydney behind the scenes. Then after that went to Melbourne and I just needed some proper introvert time, shut the whole world off, no social media, no anything. And I was just watching the uh, Gotham series 
and I was getting through that just straight binge watching and uh, really just taking some time off to recharge and get the yes, I guess, yeah, giving myself some tech yes cleansing and then uh, after that applying some tech yes loving. And then today's question of the day comes from Leo Sam and he asks, what if you ducked a case intake fan directly to the CPU cooler fan, improved air speed, flow, and lower temperatures of the air used compared to cases internal air temperature? Theoretically, it will improve cooling performance, but for how much? And it's one of those things where in the old school OEMs, they used to do this, duct it to those small uh, cooling fans. And it's a matter of, well, if you're going for higher performance, then you're going to be using a much bigger air cooler and you don't want to be ducting that thing. The build's just going to end up looking hideous. Uh, so what you actually would want to do is get a high airflow case and uh, have that running properly. Where well, it's going to give you better temperatures compared to that of an open air test bed, for example. And if you want to do this with a small air cooler, I'd kind of ask, what's the point where you, if you're flipping a gaming PC, for example, or you're putting something together, you'd kind of want more bling with an open clear side panel. And there was kind of, I guess, a reason why that phased out of OEMs, having those ducts directly to the uh, actual CPU coolers. I mean, it may be a thing in the server market. I'm just not too familiar with it, maybe still ongoing, but when it comes to gaming PCs, that got phased out a long time ago and for good reasons being. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below uh, with used power supplies, used hard drives, do you have any tips or tricks of your own or have you come into any really weird stories? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. But also on your way out, make sure you hit the sub and ring the bell because the content train is starting back up again around Tech yes City. And I'll see you in the next video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.